Howdy, this is Lemmy with RevZilla TV, here to talk to you today about how to buy riser bushings for your Harley. You should be looking into a set of riser bushings for your Harley in a couple different circumstances. If yours are already shot, if you're going to be inside of a fairing, or if you're going to a taller bar. These things are reasonably universal. Most riser bushings are going to fit just about everything that's not a Springer front end, and then there's another separate bunch of riser bushings for touring, but mostly it should be pretty easy to pick out what you've got. There's really only two styles. Installation on these really is all over the map. It can be from anywhere from one to three beards on our three beard BSD or beard scale of difficulty. Depending on what kind of bike you have and how, uh, how you access your riser bushings, that's really going to determine how long this job takes you. Could be as simple as 20 minute swap in the garage if you've got something easy. Might be a couple hours while you're underneath the fairing trying to find out exactly where these things go. Let's get right into what's available. We'll talk about what might work for you and your bike. So in terms of riser bushings, they are really just rubber cushions that live inside of your risers. They really isolate the bolts that hold your risers in place. What that means to you is that there might be a little bit of flex in your riser bushings depending on how old they are. That is sort of built into them. It's designed into the way Harley isolates vibrations from your hands. They've been using rubber bushings for a very long time, and while they do work, they leave a lot to be desired. Rubber breaks down quickly. Um, it's one of those things between the vibration and the constant hanging on them. If you push on your bars, you know, when you're, when you're moving your bike up or down into a trailer or onto a truck, the, the bushings just take kind of a beating. It's one of those things that just happens over time. And I think most Harley riders have learned to accept the fact that bushings need to be replaced. So you have a couple different replacement options. You can go with a stock-ish or, or actual OEM rubber riser bushing. I don't really recommend it. They don't last that long, they don't feel that great, and there's better options out there for similar money. That leaves you two other materials, urethane and solid bushings. Urethane sort of attempts to bridge the gap between a solidly mounted bar and that flimsy rubber that Harley gives you. So you can see here I have a set of Arlen Ness riser bushings. These are made of black urethane. So this, this urethane is actually a harder, it's a higher durometer, um, which is a measure of, of rubber stiffness. It's a higher durometer than standard rubber. It looks just like OE, but these are actually going to hold up for a lot longer. This is something you might want to consider if you do still want some isolation, you do want some vibration damping, but you don't want to be replacing your riser bushings as often um, as you would with an OEM setup. Now moving down the line here, um, we've also got this, this cool one made by Alloy Art. These are called their good and tight bushings. The reason these are different, these are also urethane, but the reason these are different is you can see on the bottom here, they actually provide hardware and they're countersunk. So when this puppy goes in there, if you have a visible front end, those of you who are maybe rocking a narrow glide, where you can actually see underneath the tree, this will present a nice, neat, flush appearance. It's not going to give that bolt head hanging out, it's not going to look all skeezy. So this might not be worth the extra money if you've got hidden risers, like those of you folks on a touring bike, but if you do want a nice, neat appearance, um, the Alloy Art Good and Tight can definitely give it to you. So moving down into the world of solid bushings. Solid bushings are both the best and the worst all at the same time. They are going to increase the perceived vibration. You're going to be getting vibration coming through the bars, and these are going to transmit almost all of it up to you. If you don't mind a little bit of vibration coming through your bars, solid bushings last nearly forever. I've never had a set worn out, nor have I ever heard of a set wearing out. I think these are sort of a permanent install, set it and forget it sort of a thing. Now, if you're looking for something just basic, just a basic chrome riser bushing, Custom Cycle Engineering offers theirs. They're um, chromed aluminum, they look great, and these things are going to just, they're going to they're gonna lock right in, they're going to look um, really trick. You can see how highly polished these things are and, and the nice chrome job they laid over it. This is just a very basic solid riser bushing, your typical entry level riser bushing. Moving down the line, we have a set of lowbrow riser bushings here. These are also very similar. They're machined nicely, they're very basic. However, much like the good and tights we saw, you're gonna see here too, the bottom uh, bushing, this is recessed. So whatever fastener you're using in there is gonna be able to sneak in there and it's gonna kinda snuggle up inside of the bushing. Um, it's gonna keep your front end looking clean. It's not, you're not gonna have hardware hanging out, it's not gonna be all over the place. Um, it's gonna tuck up in there, should look real nice. The final uh, one worth mentioning, LA Choppers makes these super cool riser bushings out of brass. These things weigh about a million pounds. I really like them. I'm actually using them on a shovel head build I'm doing at the moment. They just look trick and they're really nicely made. Again, sort of a basic classic riser bushing. 
So the solids are a good choice, again, for those of you who are looking for maximum vibration coming through the bars, but they're also great too if you are rocking a tall riser or a tall bar. If you think about the fact the bushing in the triple tree is real low, when you get a, lo a big tall bar, any, any wear in that bushing becomes magnified. Whereas if you have a shorter bar, you may only see just a little bit of play. As soon as you up the height of your risers or your bars, I think you're gonna notice lots and lots of play. It can be really unsettling. So I would definitely encourage those of you who are rocking a really tall ape, you're doing 16s or 18s, something crazy high, look into a solid bushing. You're gonna get more vibes, but your bars are gonna feel more solid. When you're coming through a corner on something that's real chopped up, and you get your hands way in the air, the last thing you want to feel are the bars moving around and the front wheel doing nothing. So in terms of installation, I had chatted earlier about this being a one to three bearder, and I know that doesn't really help many of you, but maybe we can break it down a little bit and figure out if this might work for you or not. If you've got a reasonably stripped down scoot, maybe an older narrow glide, um, something, something with an easy to get to, easy to see front end, getting in there and doing your riser bushing shouldn't be a really difficult process for you. You can see most of what you're doing. Um, it access is pretty good. You're just gonna wind up having to turn the fork a little bit to access the bolts. Shouldn't be that big a deal. However, at the opposite end of the spectrum, um, you've got something like a bagger, a modern day bagger. You've got to rip off the outer fairing, the inner fairing. You have a lot of work to do to actually just access the bolts. So physically installing these isn't really bad. It's just two bolts. It's just all of the stuff you have to remove to access them on something like say a touring bike. That in my mind would be enough to bump that into the two beard category. And when I say two beard, I'm really talking towards the advanced end of two beard. Furthermore, I know that a lot of you guys are gonna be considering these while you're doing a bar or riser swap. So if you're actually going up in height, you're adding a cable change into the mix. You're adding a little bit of electrical work. You're adding a clutch adjustment, maybe some carburetor cable adjustments. You're definitely going to be making this difficult. That can take it from the hard two into like easy or mid-level three. So realistically speaking, these can be an e as easy or as difficult as whatever job you're doing requires. Again, in terms of installation, especially those of you guys rocking fairings, I would recommend doing a set of these anytime you're in there, at least checking out what you've got. When you consider the labor or the time, depending on whether you're having somebody else working your bike or you're working on it, to get in there, this is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from whatever you're working on. So if you're in there for a broken fairing support, or maybe you're in there for a stereo, depending on whatever reason you're in there for, you definitely want to assess the condition of the riser bushings. Even if you don't tear the whole thing apart, lift the bars up, give them a wiggle, see if you can move them. If you've got perceptible movement, you probably want to slam a set of riser bushings in there just so you don't wind up doing the same job very very shortly down the road. I think all the options here are really nice. I'm kind of a solid riser bushing man myself. I suspect as I get a little older and my hands wind up falling asleep a little bit I'll gravitate towards this end of the table but for now I'm kind of a solid guy. My opinion though is not the only one that matters. Click below, learn a little bit more about these, check out some rider reviews, see what other folks are saying about both solid and urethane bushings. If you have a question I didn't get to, get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. 877-792-9455 by phone, or you can always get a Gear Geek by email, cs at revzilla.com. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.